it is, customers judge you by the way you look, what you say, how you say it, what you do, and how you do it, according to our friend Dale Carnegie. So here's some recommendations on how we can communicate more effectively. Be aware that your customers read you. They're reading your body language, they're reading the tone of voice, they're reading how you're interacting with other people. Make sure you read your customers. So when you're, are you really listening with attentively? Are you watching what they're saying? Are you trying to pick up some other clues as to what some maybe deeper meaning or, or, or you know, more de a deeper meaning is? And we also have to remember that we have to give patients uh, information in terms that they understand. We have to simplify it as much as we can. Don't use jargon. Do you use jargon at the hospital? All you all do. Sure you do. Every, every business is full of jargon. Years ago, I went to a retirement luncheon one of the guys was retiring. It was a big luncheon. There was probably 150 people there. Spouses were there and everything else. And one guy got up and gave a retirement speech in acronyms. It was, and we were, we were always paying our pants. It was so funny. But all the spouses are going, huh? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. But we were killing ourselves laughing with all the acronyms. So again, avoid that kind of stuff when we're dealing with patients because they, they just don't understand. So in order to enhance patient satisfaction, how do you communicate non-verbally when there's a delay in service, a patient is upset or angry, entering the patient's room, and you're on the telephone? Okay, so bring it out. So you guys do uh, delay in service. You guys do uh, patient is upset or angry. You guys do exiting, and we'll do telephone together when we're done. So we'll give you a minute or two to talk about what we've assigned to you, and then we'll see what you have to say, and then we'll move on to the telephone. So you've got a couple of minutes starting right now.
come in. So, and he was late. Like, you know, he had to go to or something or something. I think so. I was at the hospital last midnight, and then the half hour and a half ago. So it was a short moment. Yes. <laughs> Oh, he gets here. Oh, man. He lives in Wyoming and he drives here on Tuesdays. And, or, you know, because it's a construction season. So the drive can be six to ten hours pending. So he's always comes late on Tuesday to here, but then stays in the area because he goes to two other hospitals today and tomorrow. And then goes back. Winter is hard. Mm -hmm. He used to be flies, his plane, but since he moved, he has a problem with his hanger. Blah, blah, blah. We're not talking about that. Sorry. <laughs> oh, gee, I don't have any problem with my hanger. <laughs> <laughs> Job satisfaction because when the patient's happy, it makes you feel 
That makes you feel better. It is a circle. Exactly. So the circle of the project has four elements. Attention, acknowledgement, affection, and acceptance. And today, we are just going to focus on attention. Can I ask someone just to kill the lights? Because I want to show you another short video. Thank you very much. We're on page 26. We could do a buddy exercise and all that good stuff. But this, I think, does it best. Okay, Sandy, how do you zoom? How do you zoom? Sorry. Like 
He relaxes in the seat. He's very comfortable with her. And then he's kind of leaning forward, forward as he's asking her, you know, how, how are you doing today? What's going on? Change team. 